Korea is obviously a peninsula, but it wasn't always depicted as one on maps, but instead as an island. Let's go to rarematps.com and take a look. We'll type in Korea Island, and as you can see, multiple European maps depicting Korea as an island pop up, though their shapes vary. The years range from the late 16th century to the early 18th century. There is always a story behind these mistakes, so what's the story behind this one? Unfortunately, the origin of this one is a little more difficult to pinpoint than, say, the island of California. European mapmakers rarely surveyed newly contacted or relatively uncharted territory themselves. They relied on the reports of others, and what they thought was the most credible description or theory made it on their maps. And sometimes, cartographers didn't have much to work with, which is the case here. While Europeans were active in this region during the time period, few contacts had been made with Korea. Marco Polo made a brief mention of Korea, or what he called Kali, in the 13th century, but a description of Korea for Europeans was not made for another 300 years. And so, these 16th to 18th century maps were based on the letters and maps of Jesuits in the region. The problem was that these Jesuits were not actually in Korea, but instead China and Japan, and using their sources. This 1595 map by Abraham Ortelius was based off of a 1592 manuscript map by Portuguese Jesuit Luiz Teixeira. On this map, Korea is shaped like a carrot. Its southern point is marked Punta dos Ladronas, meaning Cape of Thieves, and below that are the Isles of Thieves both names that reflected the heavy pirate presence in the area. But Teixeira, like most other Jesuits, hadn't visited Korea himself. He was using Japanese sources. But it didn't matter. This map would be the basis for most maps of the region for decades. Some maps displayed Korea shape a little differently. Here is a 1596 map with Korea as round. Keep in mind, it's oriented to the east. This map was by a Dutch merchant, trader, and historian who spent several years in India, where he had access to Spanish and Portuguese sources. Again, not visiting Korea for himself. It's interesting that Korea as an island began to show up on European maps to begin with. What is thought to be the first European to visit Korea was a Jesuit in 1592. He came with Japanese troops during an invasion of Korea, but he did not mention anything about the Korean geography in his writings. In 1578, another Jesuit, though he didn't visit Korea for himself, wrote a little more on its geography, and his statement would contradict many others. He stated that Korea was previously thought to be an island by some, but it had recently been discovered to be a peninsula. But he didn't share who thought it was an island before this new discovery, or why it was thought to be an island to begin with. Contradicting claims go back even further. A 1558 map by a Portuguese cartographer showed Korea as a peninsula. Korea also appeared as a peninsula in 1594, a year before Ortelius's map was published. This was on a map by Dutch cartographer Petrus Plancius, though it's just barely hanging on to China, and its shape was also long and skinny like the Teixeira maps. These conflicting reports were reflected in some cartographers' work. One version of Teixeira's map, published in 1606 by Dutch cartographer Jodocus Handius, a note read that whether Korea was an island or part of the mainland was not yet agreed. English cartographer John Speed had three different versions of Korea within the frame of just a couple years. It was shown with the carrot shape after the Teixeira map, as a thin peninsula, and here it's very clearly an island. But in 1630, a map by Luis Teixeira's son depicted Korea as a peninsula, and much closer to its actual shape. However, it wasn't until 1655 that Korea, depicted as an island, really began to dwindle. This was with the publication of the work of Italian Jesuit Martino Martini by another Dutch cartographer, Johan Blau. This became the new basis for maps of the region, though Korea as an island continued to make an occasional appearance. In 1735, a French cartographer produced a map with a relatively accurate outline of Korea speeding up the disappearance of Korea Island. It finally stopped making appearances on maps by the late 18th century. In conclusion, maybe the title of this video is a little clickbaity. There is no clear answer as to why Korea appeared as an island on old maps. The island myth most likely either started from a misreading of Japanese and Chinese maps by early Jesuits, or someone, whoever they were, 
failed to circumnavigate Korea because it clearly wasn't possible, and the blank parts of the map were just filled in with speculation. Thank you RareMaps.com for sponsoring this video. RareMaps.com is an online antique map shop, and they currently have around 10,000 authentic antique maps in their inventory. These are original maps, not reprints. This video would also not have been possible without them. Most of the maps you saw in this video was from RareMaps.com, and their map descriptions and essays are a great resource as well. Again, that's RareMaps.com. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, and subscribe if you haven't already. Shout out to all my Patreon and YouTube members, and thank you all for watching.